Bonjour everyone, welcome to another diecast showcase. So today, gonna be a quick uh, combo of uh, recent finds. Uh, we're gonna free some pieces as well. Uh, you know, a little free of Friday action. And of course, um, we're gonna be uh, checking out also uh, some uh, relevant pieces uh, to compare to the ones that I actually found and uh, some that I'm going to be setting free. Um, pretty much uh, it's half a dozen cars so it's not a whole lot there plus uh, plus a five pack but pretty much all Mattel finds so a uh, mix of Hot Wheels and Matchbox and um, yeah some some newer stuff from the pegs basically so without further ado we will get started. So uh, first a uh, couple things that I picked up uh, we're just talking about a couple main lines basically. Uh, first main line that I picked up is actually one that I had stumbled upon in the past, but uh, kind of left there uh, until I noticed I don't actually have an exemplar of this cast. So, luckily, um, the uh, uh, our dollar store chain Dollarama is uh, stocking up on older uh, late 2023 cases. Um, so I did go ahead and pick uh, this piece up. So the '69 Shelby GT500 convertible. Um, Nice casting in that uh, awesome purple that Hot Wheels does really, really well. And um, yeah, no front or rear tampos on this one, but a nice, uh, nice assortment of uh, details on the sides with that uh, Hotchkiss livery and uh, some stripes on the on the hood as well that makes the air vents pop. Uh, the roll bar. It would have been cool if it was uh, kind of like a matte black or something like that instead of the body color, but you know, it's not something that's overly hard to customize. So this is probably going to end up being freed anyways, and uh, you know, I'll do my best with a Sharpie to give this car the details it so rightfully deserves because those casting details are very crisp. So, yeah, first find there. Second find actually uh, had a specific purpose. Uh, did uh, pick up the C7 Z06 from that same case, uh, part of the Then and Now series. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to pick this up is because simply the Then and Now series are one of my favorites. And I wanted to add it to the Then out of the Then and Now, which is a 62 vet. So definitely a very nice pair of cars and a nice duo. And I love that uh, nice gunmetal gray paint. Awesome, awesome stuff. Even the wheels, you know, with the black center with the chrome lip do match well together. And um, yeah, you got the same type of stripes uh, on both the vets, new and old. So C2 and C7, great stuff. Um, next, we will be looking at um, a couple of Matchbox collectors. So... I did try and stay in the uh, JDM realm with these. Um, so we have first and foremost the 2022 Lexus LX, which would be LX570. Um, definitely a very nice, uh, nice uh, truck, especially the grill. Uh, the grill work is really well done. I mean, it's 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 very almost obnoxious as a design, but it's still very well rendered. Um, I did hear in a previous video that the wheels are a little bit too small looking for the cast. I disagree. It's the tires that are actually a little bit too thin for the diameter of the wheels. So either the wheels would have to be upped in diameter as per the artwork here, or just a thicker sidewall tire would have done the trick as well. Nevertheless, this one we're going to be cracking open. I do not keep my matchbox collector or moving parts in package so of course this is coming free so here's your little bubble with the car and the collector box which is always cool for storage and whatnot um i do also love the fact that they put um, the old school matchbox logo underneath so yeah Nice artwork, little blueprint looking piece of art there. Yeah, it's a box, you know, so 
place this guy here and uh, concentrate on the model now. Get it out of its clamshell. It's very heavy. Very, very heavy. Almost like feels like a metal on metal weight. Here's your base. Rubber tires. No suspension. Very low profile tires, unfortunately. Um, I mean... This type of low profile tire would be, I'd see this on a 22, 24 inch wheel or something like that. And these don't look like 22s or 24s. Badging is kind of off on the back. Well, actually, no, it's pretty decent. It's really just that big LX license plate type of thing that kind of put me off there. Almost looks like uh, there should be an opening trunk here. And, oh, okay, there is. Well, opening this is how much it opens uh, and I'm not going to force it further because I'm assuming I'm going to break it off if I do but yeah so there's a somewhat moving part and there's that really well done front end sunroof nice uh, kind of olive green drab olive gloss green which, which is great Yeah, so I, I, I really like this. Uh, I really like this model. It really looks good. Put it right here on top. Just so you can look at that. Um, yeah, it's the only one that I do have a bunch of Toyota and Lexus SUVs, but um, this is the first uh, LX Lexus that I add. Do have some Land Cruisers, of course. I mean, who doesn't? If, uh, you're a die-cast car collector and you even remotely like Japanese vehicles. Um, and the uh, next one we're going to be checking out is the uh, same wave uh, yellow collector's variation of the facelift 3000 GT Mitsubishi. Again, no indication if it's a SL or a VR4. Um, but yeah, we'll take a peek under the base and we'll check uh, on comparables. Um, I'll be honest, I was a little bit disappointed with this specific casting, specifically the collector. Simply due to the fact that um, I was kind of expecting a little bit more, I guess, more of a difference in between the collector's edition and the, uh, the main line. Um, so here's your box, pretty much same design, but uh, obviously different car on the box. So we'll put this right next to the Lexus. There we go. And uh, yeah, we'll get the car out of a floor plan shell here. Again, very weighty. Very weighty. Um, but the weight uh, really seems to be more from the... Uh, the fact that it's got rubber tires or different type of wheels. So these are like the classic Matchbox 5 spoke, like downsized an inch or so with rubber tires. So, And the reason why I was actually disappointed is because I compared, before cracking it to what the main line looks like, there is literally no additional tampo work. We're really talking about basically rubber wheels and a license plate. That's literally the only difference in between the two, unfortunately. Um, I mean, I wish they had done a little bit of silver for the exhaust or, you know, added the uh, fog light details that you can see on the red version there. You know, a little dab of silver on that. And I mean, they are detailed out on the box, so that would have been cool, you know? You can't have it all. So, got the washed out yellow version. Um, I'll just put the red one here for now. Yeah, so this is the pastel yellow like this was a color offered in period. I do like the fact that they went for a uh, kind of like slightly beigeish gray interior, which was definitely, you know, the tan, tan interior was something that was very popular at the time, as much as the black was. Um, all on, it's great casting. Don't get me wrong, I love it. I just wish there was more of a difference in between, uh, 
you know, this version that costs four times more than the main line, except for just rubber tires on pretty generic looking wheels. Um, check underneath. Well, I mean, it does look like it's a VR4 because you've got all the indications that this does have the all-wheel drive system, whereas the SL base model was a front-wheel drive car. So, yeah, I guess it's a VR4 So with the twin-turbo uh, 6G72 V6 and uh, all the rest of the really cool features of this car. You know, this car had well, at least on the earlier generations, had active aero, uh, had uh, four-wheel steering, four-wheel drive, uh, five-speed manual to start off with the earlier versions that, by the way, would be the equivalent to this Tamika Premium. So pop-up lights instead of the fixed headlights, active aero, you had the front lip that would lower, the spoiler that would raise, that became fixed, on the later model and um, yeah so basically the I can kind of understand why they took away the active arrow as well because of the fact that you know at a certain point when it broke it was very expensive to fix and since it was very technologically advanced well not everybody was willing to work on these um, first matchbox release of this was in black so as you can see here Thought I just show that this is the one I'm keeping on card the first release so very good looking in black, makes the rear details pop. You'll notice this one has a little the DSM uh, logo on the back or the, well, the Mitsubishi three diamond uh, little logo, whereas the red version does not. So kind of a cool point there. And I thought I'd uh, finish this Comparo to the Auto World version in this really good looking Jamaican blue poly. This is a gift from uh, Jake at uh, Strictly Diecast. Uh, definitely appreciate, brother, still. Uh, definitely, definitely a great addition to uh, the uh, stealth that I have from um, Auto World as well. So we're going to just compare the size. So here's the Tomika. It's 162nd scale versus the 164th scale. Uh, pretty close, but you can definitely see that uh, the Tomika is slightly larger. Um, did post this on Instagram with the red version uh, from Matchbox. And somebody commented that uh, the window cutout seemed weird. If you look at the auto world version it's pretty much the same pretty much the same although the wheels are much better reproduced on the auto world one versus the tamika premium and i mean obviously we don't get the the auto worlds in canada but you know they're at a cheaper price point dollar per dollar versus the tamika premiums um let's compare it to the matchbox scale I mean, get the feeling that closer to 164th than the Tamika. I mean, slightly, slightly off, but barely, barely. So, interesting enough that, uh, you know, the matchbox version is closer to real a true 164 than uh, the Tamika, but at the same time Tamika is never 164 intentionally you know it's a three inch car that's made to fit in package um now we're gonna jump into a five pack that i bought since uh one of my local dollaramas actually started uh stocking five packs um i picked this one up for one specific car since Actually, at the price I paid, these are actually dollar cars. And we're talking about Canadian dollar cars, so probably the equivalent of four bucks US, three three fifty to four bucks US. Uh, I picked up the um, exposed engines, the most recent one, and the reason why I picked it up was for this beauty right here, the Chevy Love, Rail UV. Definitely wanted to pick this guy up because literally this is one of my favorite castings from Hot Wheels. We're talking about the 
trucks as a whole. And um, I really wanted it because I found it would match really well with this premium 72 Chevy Love release. And this would be from the Power Trip series. So, yeah, we're going to be opening this five pack and uh, checking out the two vehicles, the two bottom vehicles, basically. Um, I mean, the other three are really going to be gifted to my daughter. So, you know, it's not going to be uh, something I'm going to. go all right so the tray is out of the box so I'll just show you the other three cars there so we've got this guy here what is this one the crate racer and it's got a moving engine I'm assuming that kind of moves when you roll it around not really I mean, you know, the engine could be used for a custom, but, you know, that that's going to be my daughter's. Then we've got the, um, the Twin Mill 3. Again, not really something that uh, I really collect. Well, any of the Twin Mills, actually. I mean, it's a cool concept and, you know, whatnot. It's a classic. It's a staple, but it's not something I'm really into. This, I kind of hesitated. If I was going to keep it or not, it's the Lethal Diesel. And this looks really cool. You can see chrome windows, which is kind of unusual. But, I mean, it just, this, this on the get-go, you know. Five exhaust pipes per side, so I'm assuming V10. It's just like one of those crazy, almost gasland-looking vehicles. It's kind of like a chopped, slammed Hummer. Or whatnot. I don't know. The mean eyes on the front. I love the color on this. It's kind of like a medium gray metallic. With the arrow, staggered arrow discs in very dark gray. So it's a cool car, but I'm not going to keep it. Promised it to my daughter, so she's going to get that. This one, though, I am going to keep. 42 Willys Jeep. The Alter chassis. Kind of like a old school drag look. Uh, I do have uh, one of the first release of this carded on a short card. Blue with white wheels. So now I got the John Deere almost liveried green with the yellow interior and the yellow rimmed wheels. Love the headers coming out of this. Love the Alter chassis with a little single run gas tank on the front like a gasser. Big blower on the top. Parachute on the back. Big cage. You know, I have a decent Jeep collection, so I'm happy to have one of these loose, especially in a deco that's uh, kind of an exclusive. And I mean, if you guys just watch Sick Week, it's pretty cool that uh, this has kind of like mud tires on the back because the big tire guys that have to do a couple hundred uh, miles on the road, well, the cheapest way to get that done while keeping the same overall diameter wheel is to get off-road, big off-road tires and put those on your tiny, wide rear drag wheels or drag rims. Pretty cool. I like it. I really like this. It's very, very, very cool. Let me put this one here. And, of course, star of the show. Reason why I bought the pack first of these I have loose in the collection the Chevy Love get the PR5s black spoke chrome lip and a really cool retro type of side livery and that really cool purple to blue kind of flip paint pearlescent flip paint great rear end just missing some light and some exhaust details. Thankfully, the front has the chrome insert from the interior, which also lends itself to that V8 that's just hinting from the hood opening and very, very tubbed rear with the fuel cell. Definitely a very cool. Oh, you see the buckets in there. 
tiny steering wheel and the uh, canted or tilted sunroof which is a cool touch slightly slightly smoked windows so definitely a very cool cool vehicle all right so next up we're gonna be checking out a couple moving parts I'm gonna end off with those moving parts new with the and these this is the latest wave to us the revised packaging now this one you'll notice the packaging is actually damaged and you know I, I don't care because I open all of these anyways and um, it's gonna be my first time opening one of these but uh, definitely there was a theft attempt on one of these and seemingly it works because you can clearly see somebody tried to get the car out and realized that they couldn't hence the busted blister this is a really popular one I mean after the Porsche uh, it's probably the most popular one you know obviously uh, um, you know the other one we're gonna check out is also very popular but for I think more for hoarding purposes than for actual collecting you know um, so yeah let's uh, get one of these open right away and uh, see what uh, what all the fuss is about with this new packaging I personally find aesthetically they're much better especially for storage um, I don't know why this uh, foaming, foamish material kind of smells funky for whatever reason. That may just be me, but uh, yeah. So here's your packaging, how it sits on the back. And I mean, this thing is tight. And uh, this uh, little checking for a uh, quick, quick under the light here for uh damage because there are a couple small paint shavings but uh, yeah really really nice yellow paint this is actually I, know, I didn't notice this one picking it up and it's kind of hard to pick up on the light but this is pearlescent yellow opening hood of course let's see if we can get some yeah there's not a whole lot of detail but I mean the signature Hellcat blower is definitely there. Nice front details. So see these, you got the classic matchbox, well now classic matchbox five, four, matchbox five spoke wheels. And the, this is a design that was actually used on the 3000 GT. A blade in a smaller diameter with rubber tires. So there you go. Um, rear end's very well done. And um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first Hellcat charger made by Matchbox. As the other charger releases would be this non-Hellcat non versions. So without the wide body, stock bumpers, different grill. This is like the, looks. It doesn't even look like it's a, it's a V8 version. It just looks more like a base model it's got no RT it's got no nothing so I'm gonna assume this is a base model Pentastar V6 versus the Hellcat even lack of sunroof on the base model should definitely be standard on the V8 models so there you go that's pretty cool now obviously um, actually I'll put this here now, definitely Hot Wheels did, um, didn't did have their own uh, go at the SRT Hellcat. You can actually see that they did the Hellcat blower on the top of the hood as the hood does not open. But all in all, it would be interesting to kind of compare the tampa work and all that good stuff. So let's see what we have. Um... Yeah, okay, so this is definitely a wide body. This is not. So that's another difference right there. And obviously, the two Mattel brands always have to make the cars different if they're releasing the same model. So either it's going to be through an opening part, like I originally assumed on these two. But no, indeed, this is a wide body. Whereas the 
Matchbox version is not. So I'll let you guys be the judge of who did the Tampa work better. Hot Wheels or Matchbox. I personally prefer the Matchbox one, but, you know, that's always up for debate. And, of course, you know, it's not like Hot Wheels hasn't done the Hellcat in premium. We've seen it a couple times. This is my favorite variation. And even more interesting to compare. There you go. It's much more similar. The premium release versus the normal one. Yeah. I think the green one here is more similar. Mind you, the black one that uh, we just looked at is actually a um, out of the Fast and Furious uh, semi-premium 10-pack. And it is an exclusive, I believe. So, yeah. It's kind of like probably the reason why it's a different model. So last one that I actually picked up, and I'm extremely happy to finally find this cast. The infamous and elusive at least to me, Evo 4, Mitsubishi Lancer. Um, this is what, the third color variation? It was in blue before that. First release was in gray, and I'm not sure if it was a, another release between the gray and the blue one. Finally, I have it. I kind of got scared because looking at the uh, artwork, see how there's like no front lights or no, no front details for the front lights? I was kind of thinking that that would be the case but clearly it's not because you can see right there that there are front lights so we're gonna get this one out of the package as well since again moving parts and collectors they are coming out of the package so it's gonna be the last car we're gonna check out again quick inspection make sure there's no paint rash not really. Let me just give a quick polish to the roof here because I find it's a little bit dull. And again, you know, just like uh, the SRT we checked out before this one. It's got an opening hood and moving parts. I'm going to be very tempted, if not obliged almost, to buy it. So, we've got the opening hood on this one too. And this one is much better detailed. you got the 4G63 T. Good old two liter four banger turbo. And uh, yeah, front details are way better than expected, which is great. Thank the higher up for that. You got your vents that are totally well done. Also, with the same five spokes as the SRT, but this time in black got pretty much the same type of uh, lack of uh, side continuation of the rear lights as the uh, Evo 6 from Hot Wheels. The rear is well done. Again, just like the Evo 6 from Hot Wheels, the rear wing is plastic, which I totally expected anyways. Of course, right-hand drive, because these were never made in left-hand drive. <laughs> yeah. Ah, there you go. And a little bit of Remnants from that uh, weird styrofoamish compact thing. But yeah, overall, very happy to add this to the collection. And I have it added to the collection because uh, honestly, it's the first Evo 4 I get in the collection. I do have an Evo 3 from Lan uh, Lancer from uh, Jada, but this is a 155th scale. It's from, um, uh, sorry, Initial D. So old, I picked this up off the pegs probably 15 to 20 years ago. Well, probably more like 15 years ago. And uh, I've had it on display ever since. This is when I used to crack everything open. Typical Jada. No door handles on this. So, happy to get a more adequately scaled and maybe more accurately cast Evo of this kind of vintage. So, that's... All I have for you today, uh, hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, uh, 
uh, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, obviously, I'm going to wish you best of luck in your hunts. All the best. Uh, stay safe out there. Take care, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.